So introducing Bart Rupp and Renee Van Tienhoven from Leiden University Medical Center. And they're going to discuss their work on alternatively spliced insulin gene products found in the human pancreatic delta cells. So Bob, as it's quite a complex area, would you mind running through a little bit of the background to islets and beta cells and delta cells, how they fit into the picture, and also a little bit about the role of autoimmunity in the development of type 1 diabetes? My pleasure, Catherine. So the islets of Langerhans uh, contain uh, different types of hormone-producing cells, and the curiosity in diabetes has always been why are only the beta cells that make insulin destroyed? One type of, of endocrine cells is the delta cell, and they make a hormone that does basically the opposite of insulin. So it's kind of yin and yang. They, so these endocrine cells in the islets, they keep each other in check. But strangely, only beta cells are the victim in the immune process that is uh, destroying this source of insulin. Well, that's, that's interesting. And I, I understand you've got a bit of a story about how you stumbled on this area of research because you were actually looking at something completely different. So could you tell us how that happened? Yeah, this is one of those really enjoyable uh, journeys uh, as a scientist. So fairly recently, we discovered that what I used to say diabetes is a mistake of the immune system might actually be wrong and diabetes might actually be a mistake of the beta cells and the immune system responding to this. So what we had discovered was that sometimes when beta cells are stressed and they are tended to be stressed, they're the hardest working cells we have, then can make misreads of the insulin gene. So the ribosomes that translate the messenger RNA into protein, they may start reading in the wrong part of the sentence in the middle of the word. And then you get really bogus proteins uh, that are fantastic targets of the immune system. They're really provoking the immune system to respond. So in other words, when a beta cell is stressed, that's actually evoking an immune response with good intentions that, uh, that should deal with that stressed beta cell. Because similar changes happen when cells get infected or when they become tumors. So it's what the immune system is meant to do. But of course, the immune system is not meant to destroy a vital source of insulin. So there was a, a problem here. So we discovered this. And, and so the immune system was responding to what we call neoantigens, the proteins that are wrong and mistakes and therefore new to the immune system. And that was a big breakthrough in its own right. But so then we needed reagents to look for this particular protein. So we started, to, and we as Arno Saldombide and I started to make antibodies against this protein. And that's where things got array, because when those antibodies were used by René to stain islets, we didn't see beta cells to stain. We saw something else. And we're diving a little bit deeper, and it turned out to be delta cells. And the first thing we thought, oh, we we're in trouble. We have to retract the, the original story, which was published in Nature Medicine. That that, that was oh, not that something I was looking forward to. No, it's every scientist's worst nightmare. So we wanted to reconcile what what we had and, and what it was meaning, and that's where this this journey started. That is now going to be published in Diabetologia. And Rene, maybe you want to take up from there how we made next steps there. Yeah. So it turns out that. Uh... The protein we found in delta cells is exactly the same as the one that Bart talked about, the neoantigen. Uh, the last part is the same. So we actually stained the other protein with this antibody, and it turns out that this was an alternative splice product from the insulin gene. So this protein, the end terminus looks exactly like insulin, but the last part of it looks like neoantigen. And that's how we solve this and that's something that we really wouldn't expect to see in a delta cell then i'm right that delta cells they produce a matastatin which is a completely different hormone so we wouldn't expect to see something that look like looks like insulin in the delta cell yeah exactly this was uh, a big shock that delta cells were able to make um to make insulin products yeah, so that that is really why it was so counterintuitive so by chance, there was a serendipitous finding that the antibodies we made cross-reacted with another protein, but that other protein is also a wrong product of the insulin gene. So this basically means that delta cells are using the insulin gene. And that, that is something that is very difficult to reconcile, in particular because the protein that we discovered 
turns out to carry some of the major targets of the autoimmune response that is otherwise destroying beta cells in type 1 diabetes. So this is a real wake-up call and it could affect some of the previously published papers when they think they talk about beta cells, they could actually be delta cells. Yeah, that could be could be a problem. And so do you have an idea why the this particular protein, this particular insulin gene product isn't found in beta cells when it is found in delta cells? And that's where Renee kicks in. Renee, uh, take on 50 minutes of fame here. <laughs> so the insulin and the, the splice variant look a lot alike. So the insulin B chain is in insulin and also in the splice variant. And we found this protein called uh, insulin degrading enzyme that binds to the B chain and then breaks down insulin. And we thought maybe the splice variant can also be broken down this way. And when I stained for insulin degrading enzyme in islets, we found that delta cells do not have this protein at all. So we found it all over the islet and even in the exocrine tissue, but not in delta cells. So we think that both beta cells and delta cells make this protein, but it's broken down rapidly in the beta cells, but it cannot be broken down in the delta cells. And that's why we only find it there. Gosh, so it sounds like um, then it could be something that's quite meaningful as regards both the research community and also potentially clinically. So do you have an idea what the implications really are for these these findings? Well, the, the thing with flies proteins is that they have often been discarded as, as junk. But we know from other systems that the splice variants often play an important role in determining the tissue identity of cells. So you can imagine when islet cells develop, these splice proteins could push it in one direct direction or the other. So it is possible that because not all the delta cells express it, it's a very specific subset that does it. It could be that the, this is pointing to development, differentiation, maybe trans-differentiation. And there's another mystery in diabetes that people believe that, you know, they can change identity. So maybe this is actually pointing to endocrine cells changing identity and therefore the hormones that they produce. It could also maybe reflect to another mystery in diabetes, which is in type 1 diabetes, which is what we call senescence, or I call it hibernation. And so we see children dying of diabetes, but their eyelids are sometimes still full of insulin. So the beta cells are there, except they're not functioning. So could it be that these uh, different products of the insulin gene play a role in shutting on or off the beta cells to avoid that they're, they're going to be destroyed? So it, it opens really a, a couple of cans of worms, to be, be quite honest. Yeah. Uh, so, but the beauty is, and you, you hinted to that, Catherine, is that we now have reagents because we have antibodies that recognize this. We, by the way, now also have monoclonal antibodies that are specific for this neoantigen and beta cell, so we can now even distinguish the two. So as Renee said, they're very similar, yet they're also different in terms of the first part of the protein, uh, which in case of drip, it's actually part of insulin, it's the insulin B chain, or in case of the splice, sorry, in case of the drip, that's completely lacking. And the new part that the drip has is the most immunogenic one. That's where the beta cells get destroyed by. So these new reagents help us differentiate different subsets of beta cells and different subsets of delta cells. And there has been an unmet need for those reagents in the islet research community, in the diabetes community. So everybody's welcome to drop us a line and we'd be happy to share these. That's great. So it can have really quite broad implications for the for islet research generally, as well as for your own research group. Yeah. So one question that immediately popped up in my mind, Catherine, is that it bothers me that delta cells can actually make proteins from the insulin gene that are very immunogenic and that we know from different models can actually cause diabetes. So it actually is also reminding us that there's something special about beta cells, right? So beta cells are very vulnerable. So even though delta cells now apparently share uh, features and, and even proteins with, with beta cells, there's something to beta cells that makes them 
suffer most. So that is another thing that we can use and maybe also learn from delta cells how to protect beta cells from this whole process, right? So there's really uh, a lot of, uh, it's, it's a gold nugget in terms of, mm. of getting new projects done and, and understanding disease and also treating it. Yeah, there's a lot of material there. It sounds sounds like it could keep, keep you busy for quite a while. What are the, your next steps as regards your next research plans in this field? So what we are very interested in is to see whether the protein, the wrong, so the misread of the insulin gene that is the splice protein, what function it has. Does it play a role in development of islets or differentiation or transdifferentiation? Is it, is it a, a transcription factor of genes? Also, it, we want, are very interested to understand why beta cells, although they carry a protein that is the target of the autoimmune response in diabetes, survive. And that we want to use to tailor new beta cells that are stem cell derived. So can we edit stem cells so they won't make this product and, and become less immunogenic and also less stressed? So that's another area. And we're looking for whether maybe if this protein is secreted like insulin, could it tell us something about whether the beta cell is in distress whether it, or whether it is maybe hibernating or whether something is wrong? In other words, can we use it as a biomarker of uh, disease progression? So th those are the, the primary leads that we have in terms of this splice protein. And similar things we also do with the original neoantigen that we discovered that we call DRIP. So, which is highly similar, yet slightly different. So we want to get a, an understanding of why, why this happens. In the meantime, we have discovered that the beta cells make many more mistakes, including from the insulin gene. So a single beta cell is super active. It can make up to a million insulin molecules per minute. So no wonder it can make mistakes if you work that, that hard. But that sometimes these may not be just mistakes. They might be meaningful and, and sometimes maybe intentional. Now, that's the thing we really want to understand. So they're not necessarily just junk, these um, alternatively exactly. spliced, spliced genes product, gene products. Precisely. They could yeah. actually be doing something that we don't yet understand. Yeah, I think I think islets are too sophisticated to make junk. And, and likewise, I think the immune system is too smart to destroy happy tissue. So there is something about these new proteins, these new antigens that we need to understand so that we can actually prevent beta cells from being destroyed, prevent them even from being stressed, because that's where it all starts, right? It's, it's a, a dialogue between the immune system and, and beta cells, but it's the beta cells that play a role in there. And that's important because everybody is disappointed with the the limited efficacy of immunotherapy. So if we can now be smart and think about beta cell therapy, or at least making beta cells happy, or new beta cells in the case of transplantation, that would really be a major leap in battling development of type 1 diabetes and curing it. It's really exciting times to be involved in diabetes research. Rene, I just have one last question for you, because I understand that you have type 1 diabetes yourself. So what does it mean to you both personally and professionally to be involved in such exciting areas of diabetes research? Yeah, that's right. I've had diabetes for over 20 years now. And because of that, I started to study uh, type 1 diabetes in search of a cure. I think it's uh, very interesting to learn about the processes that are going on in your own body. Like You learn the normal processes and then what's going on during type 1 diabetes. You kind of exactly know what went wrong with your immune system and your beta cells. So most of the time, it's uh, very exciting to gather all this new knowledge and discover things that no one else knows yet. But sometimes it can be a bit confronting too if you learn about um, diabetic complications, for example, like this, these things that can happen to you. Uh, but overall, my experience has been great and uh, I will continue uh, my research in type 1 diabetes. Well, that's very exciting. I wish you both the very best of luck with your future research and look forward to finding out more as, as things progress. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for your interest in our work. And, uh, and again, uh, our new reagents are available to everybody in the field. So uh, please join us in uh, solving these mysteries. Great. Thank you.